an indie coming of age drama set in LA. Let's talk about Scrap. It's David Stark from Watcher Pass. And I'm here to talk to you about Scrap, which is an indie film that debuted at the, I'm going to say this wrong, the Devil Duvel American Film Festival and is now making the festival circuit. It is a coming of age film that is written, directed by, and starring Vivian Kerr. Uh, my hot take is look, I think you should probably watch it. It's kind of between a rent and a watch. I was kind of going in between. You'll see why in the things I liked and didn't like about it. But I think overall, on balance, after some reflection, I think it's probably a watch. It is a heartfelt, raw, and at times painful story to watch about trying to make it on your own and trying to kind of like pull yourself up after some really bad life events happen. So overall, I ended up liking it. I liked the way that this film uh, ended. It's painful at the start. It's slow at the start. But as the film progresses, it gets better and better. So... I'm going to tell you a little more about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. Uh, so as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, I would turn off when I get there, though. Before that, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler-free. I'll let you know I get to those spoilers. So in Scrap, you have Beth, who is a single mother who is raising her daughter, trying to make it on her own, and then she gets laid off. And because of that... Her life goes into turmoil. Uh, she drops her kid off at her brother's house, doesn't tell him what's going on, just says like their house is getting renovated or something like that. And she ends up living in her car, trying to find work, trying to kind of make it. This doesn't go really well for her. Uh, some, some ups and downs happen. And eventually she has to grow and kind of learn from all this to try to make a life for her and her daughter. So that being said, things I liked about this movie, the first, there's some pretty clever writing. I liked uh, the film overall. I liked the characters. I liked the way that it was written, despite me not liking the main character for reasons you'll see it a little bit later. But overall, I think that the conversations were fun. I think they're pretty interesting. It was, a, a you know, the movie is mostly dialogue and luckily the dialogue is pretty good throughout. Uh, the second thing I liked, look, it's a it's a painful story to watch and, and it's a, a story that might relate to people. It's a story that uh, lets you kind of see one person struggle. Um Beth has, you know, some advantages, like a brother who can watch her kid. And, you know, she has apparently enough credit card debt to kind of get by for a bit. But it is still she is still kind of like off the ropes trying to make it and having things really fall apart for her. Uh, the third thing I love, I love the sound. It's a really good use of sound. They play some like old style, like nostalgic music pieces during some of the scenes, which really kind of help to uh, up the mood in them. And also there are some really great times when the sound just cuts out. And I love it when directors do that. I love it when there's a really kind of poignant moment that causes the sound to cut out and you just kind of like focus on what is happening and what the actors are doing. And this film does it a couple times and it's really, really good. And the last thing I love, look, there are some interesting characters. It's a small cast, it's an indie film, but each character feels different. Each character feels unique. Each character feels really fleshed out. And it's fun to kind of see their interactions. Painful at times as well, but also just you know generally enjoyable to see how these different characters navigate the situation and navigate dealing with Beth and what is going on with her. So all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first, it is a painful thing to watch at times. Like part of it is just the situations that happened to Beth. There's a lot that goes on for her. Part of it is her character and her decisions. I'm going to get into that in a little bit later, but... It is a it is a double edged sword, right? It's it's nice that it is raw. It's it is nice that there are some challenges that Beth has to face. But on the other hand, it makes it kind of difficult to watch at times. It makes it kind of frustrating to watch at times. Uh, the second thing I didn't love as much, it's fairly slow, especially at the start. It really kind of wants you to delve into what Beth is going through and the steps that she is trying to take and the bad decisions that she is making to try to like prop herself up and. That leads to a very slow start, a very slow start, a very kind of like piling on start, which is part of why it's painful to watch uh, and also just why the start is very, very slow. So just keep that in mind. It gets better. It gets better, especially towards the end. I liked the way that the film overall ended. So just uh, keep that in mind and, and kind of stick with it. And the last thing I didn't love, I'm just going to say the main character is infuriating. Look, I, I didn't really connect with Beth. I appreciate her struggle. I appreciate what she was trying to do. But some of her uh, character traits and things that she did were really, really frustrating for me. Look, that's just my perspective. That's kind of uh, what I, I wanted her to do some things that are different. She did it in her own way. And that is, you know, how the film is progressing. But for me, there were some scenes where I'm like, just, just do it this way. Or like, just say something else. And she didn't do it. So that kind of led to frustration for me. But look, overall, Scrap is definitely a heartfelt film. It is definitely a film that feels very personal. It's a film that uh, maybe a lot of people can relate to. So check it out when it's on the festival circuit. I imagine it'll come 
a little bit later to some sort of like either digital distribution platform or some sort of a streaming platform. But for now, it's running the festival circuit. Keep your eyes out if you're going. And um, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to go into the ending right now. So if you don't want to know what happens in this film, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. In Scrap, you've got Beth who is just trying to make it by. She's scrapping by. I think that's why the film is called Scrap. I'm going to go with that. She starts by sleeping in her car. So she dropped her kid off at her brother's place. Didn't tell him what happened. Didn't tell him, you know, that she got laid off. I think she was embarrassed. I think she didn't want to, like, uh, ask him for help. She was fairly proud. And so she starts living in a car. Now, some things about Beth and her brother. Now, Beth's parents and her brother's parents, obviously, uh, her brother's name is Ben. They were killed uh, when they were both young in a plane accident. And so Ben essentially raised Beth. He's the older brother. He kind of looked out for her, raised her. And so... They should be fairly close, and they are, but Beth is also very, very kind of standoffish with him. She doesn't want to tell him the things that are going on in her life. She's, she's like relies on him and knows he'll help her, but she doesn't give him the whole story. He does, she doesn't like give him all the information. And so this is a fairly infuriating thing to watch because you know she'll lie about things, she'll forget things because she has a lot going on. And she doesn't tell Ben what is happening. And Ben really wants to help her. He really wants to support her. He wants to make sure that she is doing okay. And Ben has his own things going on. Ben and his wife are dealing with IVF. They're dealing with the frustrations and stress of that. And so Ben is a very supportive character for everyone. And it seems like he just wants to help everyone. And when Beth is not giving him the information that he probably should have, it leads to some very infuriating scenes. But Beth is trying to make it. She's living in her car, sleeping in her car, waking up and just kind of like trying to apply for jobs, trying to just kind of make it moving from place to place. And I think living in your car in LA is probably very, very tough. It's set in LA, which I loved. I love seeing LA. Uh, it has a lot of different places in LA that you get to go to. But I imagine living in your, car, in your car is really tough in LA. I bet the parking is difficult. Uh, you know, gas is really expensive. She spends a lot of time driving. She is kind of on the ropes. She is trying to get jobs. So she'll like apply for jobs. She gets a call back. She'll drive to like a gym, shower there, get ready, get into her nice clothes that she keeps in her car, go to the job interview, things like that. But nothing is really working out for Beth and it's getting worse and worse. Eventually she ends up asking to move in with her brother because her house is getting renovated or they're moving. It comes up, she comes up with some excuse. I think this one was they're moving, all their stuff is in storage, she needs a place to stay. And so she ends up living with her brother, which he allows despite the additional stress on him and his family. He allows her to do that. Now, this means that Beth can interact with Birdie, her daughter, who has been living with them for a while. And then there's some interesting conflicts here where like Ben and his wife, Stacy, have been watching over Birdie for a bit and they kind of have a routine. And when Beth comes in, it just completely derails it. But I thought it was interesting as well because uh, Birdie is a key character in this movie. She is like, you know, the main reason that Beth is trying to like make it on her own. She's trying to like build a life for her. It's really interesting to see like no matter what happens with Beth, if she misses something for Birdie, if she like doesn't show up for a while, Birdie always is excited to see her. She always like wants to be with her mother. So despite her living with Ben and Stacy for a while, she instantly like gravitates to her mother. She instantly wants to listen to her mother say to what her mother says. Uh, it is an interesting dynamic, but it also is an important piece, I think, to kind of showcase Beth is a little bit of a selfish person and she is definitely kind of throwing some chaos into this overall life. Now, throughout this entire journey some interesting events happen uh her and her brother have a day when they hang out they go to like a roller rink they hang out and there she meets this nice person named marcus he's this really sweet guy he works at the roller rink he you know hits it off with her and um you know before she leaves uh she tells him that she got laid off i think this is the first person that she's actually told which is interesting like she didn't really know him i think she just wanted to like get it out there and he's like, oh, like that's like that sucks. I'm sorry. There's a job fair actually for this mall opening next to next door. You should go to that. And Beth is fairly proud. She had a you know an account executive type job. So she doesn't want to go down to retail. She doesn't want to like work that job. But she takes the thing anyways. And before she leaves, Marcus asks, like, hey, can I get your number? Uh, and she's like, I have a five-year-old daughter. And Marcus is like, that's cool, whatever. Uh, and Beth is still a little standoffish, but she gives him her number anyways. And Marcus is this just like sweet character. I really liked him. I liked the, the, the actor who portrayed him. It was, he was like a really fun, like just generally nice person. Now, later on, Beth has been dodging calls from various people. Uh, some people are debt collectors because she owes some debts. Uh, some people are, uh, friends that she doesn't want to like update on her situation. And one person is this, uh, number that says, do not answer. Now that is her 
I can't tell if it's ex-husband or just boyfriend in general, but it is, he is the father of Birdie. Now, Birdie is five years old. Essentially, when Beth told him he was pre- that she was pregnant, he just left. He like he couldn't deal with it. He was also apparently abusive to her. He was an asshole. So he was also apparently abusive to her. He wasn't a good partner anyways. But when she told him that she was pregnant, he just up and left. Now, five years later, he's trying to get in contact with her. He's trying to call her. She's ignoring it. Eventually, she does pick up. And this is when he tells her like that he's changed, that he's in therapy. He's trying to deal with his anger. He's trying to make amends. And he comes off as very sweet, very understanding. Um, she is a little hesitant, but agrees to go out with him again later. They go out. They have a fun night. Everything seems really nice. He gives her you know, a check saying like, look, no strings attached. I just want to do this to support you and Birdie. It's not even close to what you owe, but it's something I want to do. So they have a nice night. They hang out. Unfortunately, they drink a little bit too much. She sleeps in and ends up missing her daughter's dance recital, which has been on her calendar for a while. Uh, her daughter really, really wants to see it. And once again, Ben and Stacy have to kind of like cover up. They've been picking up Birdie when uh, she when Beth forgets. So they've been taking care of her when Beth was away. And now they have to tell Birdie that, oh, Beth had like an important meeting, so she couldn't miss it. So she's really sorry, but she can't go. Beth ends up making it just in time to see like everyone leaving the dance recital. So uh, Stacy takes Birdie away before she sees her and Ben comes and like confronts her and tells her like how upset he is. Oh, and after after the recital, one of the administrators in Birdie's school comes up to her and she has been hounding Beth for money. Like, you know, they need tuition. It's a private school, I guess. They need to pay tuition. And Beth has always said, oh, I paid it. There must be an error with the bank. All these excuses. Well, uh, she Beth shows her the like check that she just got from her ex and being like, I, I, you know, I have the money. I'm going to cash it. Uh, I'm going to help. Uh, I'm going to pay it soon. And the person's like, no, it's okay. Your brother already took care of it. So on top of everything else that he is doing for her, he also pays for her car to get like out of impound one time. He also paid for her tuition. So I think Beth realizes this is kind of like how much her brother does for her and how much she doesn't really appreciate that. Beth probably should have just like left and like, you know, let it be. But she ends up following Ben and Stacy to the car seeing birdie birdie is excited to see her which i love i love scenes like this where like even though birdie is super disappointed that she didn't come she still is really excited to see her mom she's still really excited to like come and and spend time with her beth decides to spend the day with her uh they hang out they go home beth takes birdie back to ben's house and afterwards we see her ex in front of the house beth comes to see her she's like coy about it you know like what are you doing here but she seems genuinely happy they talk. Um, she asked, like, why'd you leave? And he said, look, I freaked out. Like, I, I don't know if I could do it. And he seems to be waffling. Before he said, like, he wanted to be in Birdie's life. And now he's saying, like, he's not sure if he can. He wants to, like, take time to see what happens. And Beth is like, no, like, I don't have time. Like, you you, you, you want to be in her, in her life? You can be in her life. And he gets upset with her. He, you know, ends up smacking her, which apparently is a pattern from before. We had thought that maybe he'd change, but he hadn't. Ben sees this, runs out, you know, Tells him to get away, tells him he's going to call the cops, you know, tells him to not contact them again. Ben instantly plays like the protective role. And so after Ben confronts uh, the ex, they kind of have a heart to heart. Ben had earlier found out that Beth got laid off. He actually went to her old work to have lunch with her. It was a very sweet moment. And they're like, oh, you know, Beth doesn't work here. It really sucks. She got laid off, you know, because the company was downsizing. There's nothing that she did. It just happened. And, you know, this kind of frustrates him as it should because he wanted to know these kinds of things he kind of always feels like he's trying to take care of her and she isn't giving him that information so after all of this they have some wine they have a heart to heart you know he asks her like why you're not telling me these things like why don't you want me to know and beth basically says like look maybe i don't want your help maybe everything isn't always on your shoulders which is a good idea it's a nice sentiment but it seems like beth does still need his help uh despite her not wanting it and despite um you know, her wanting to kind of like be independent. She still kind of needs some help from family. She still kind of needs some help from the people around her. Uh, She tells him he's going to pay, she's going to pay him back for everything that he's paid. And he's like, you don't owe me anything, which is another really sweet moment. They have a a bunch of sweet moments. So it seems like Beth is kind of starting to turn her life around. It seems like Beth is starting to kind of like, uh, now that her brother knows, it seems like they're opening up and Beth decides, you know what? I think now it's time to, to do something. So they plan Birdie's birthday party. Birdie is really excited about it. They, you know, 
get a bunch of they get, they get a bunch of stuff ready. And before that, Beth goes and applies for a job at the job fair. It's a retail job. She, you know, is selling makeup. The person's like, I think maybe you're overqualified. She's like, no, I love people. Like, I want to change. And she kind of really tries to sell it and ends up getting the job. So she has a job now. The birthday is at a bowling alley. It's really cute. Marcus is there. He like, you know, says hi. She's like, oh, hey, I got a job nearby. So I guess, you know, we'll see you around more. So it's a very kind of like nice moment for her. It seems like she is just kind of opening up, looking into new things. Um, Beth ends up kind of turning her life around after she finally gets this job, after she kind of like starts working, she's able to get a house. She asks um, Stacy, you know, Stacy and her have a heart to heart. Stacy didn't really like her because of how much she used Ben, which makes sense. Um, but they kind of have a heart to heart. And, uh, Beth asks if Bertie can stay with her for a little bit while she gets her new place set up. And Stacy's like, look, Bertie can stay with us as long as she wants. And so can you, like your family, just don't keep secrets from us. Like we're family. We shouldn't have secrets. We can have a few secrets from Ben, but like overall just stop the bullshit, which is right. Like it's a good, it's a, it's a good thing that it's, it's a good kind of policy to have. And so after this, Beth is able to kind of like get her place set up. Uh, she is working now. She runs into one of her old associates from the marketing agency. The person comes in and like, I think she seems a little like surprised that Beth is working here. I think she feels like, you know, maybe it's a step down, but Beth seems happy. Like she says, hi, she's like, you know, oh yeah, I work here. It's great. And then as they're talking, Marcus comes in and like asks if she's ready to go to lunch. They uh, apparently are dating now. And Beth's like, yeah, let's, we should go. And she's like, good seeing you, you know, and goes off and enjoys her life, enjoys her like new world. She has a place. She has a boyfriend. She has a job. She seems like she is kind of getting her life back together. And she also encourages her brother to like push for his dream. There was a book that he wanted to publish, a dream book for him that uh, his publisher didn't want. His, his her brother was a fantasy writer. He had a really strong following, but he wasn't interested in writing more fantasy. He wanted to publish this uh, biography about Billie Holiday. And the publisher's like, no, like that's not going to sell. No one wants to have another biography about Billie Holiday. He ends up, his, her brother ends up being like, look, you publish this or I'm going to find a new publisher. And we get to see that the Billie Holiday book is out. Beth had sent him like a painting uh, of Billie Holiday for his office, which is really sweet. And we see her brother at a book signing of the Billie Holiday uh, book. Some people show up. Beth shows up to support him. They then go to pick up Birdie. Beth is nervous because she's like, you know, what if she doesn't want the new, to stay in the new place? What if she like, you know, wants to stay with you? And Ben is like, you know, you don't have to worry about that. So Bert, Beth goes and picks up Birdie. Uh, they end up just kind of like sitting down and coloring for a little bit. It's a very, very sweet scene. And everyone seems happy. It seems like everyone has grown. And that is the movie that is Scrap. Like I said, it's playing the festival circuit right now. So if you can see it, I would check it out. It is infuriating at times. Like Beth's character is very difficult because she lies to Ben. She lies to everyone around her. She is like constantly spending. She's like shopping and buying stuff on eBay and Amazon. I think probably just to like numb some of the pain of like losing everything. She is making some bad decisions, but all of that leads to later growth, which is kind of the, the most important part of the movie. All that leads to her like reassessing her life, re you know, pulling herself back up and trying to get her life back in order. So like I said, it's a frustrating start. It's a slow start, but it gets better in the end. So that is Scrap. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.